Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Over the last couple of years, I've covered a technology called Mocha that allows you to extend your home computer network using your cable TV wiring. It works exceptionally well. In fact, it is very close to an ethernet connection insofar as latency and bandwidth is concerned. And the latest version of Mocha 2.5 can support two and a half gigabits per second of data transfers, give or take, depending on conditions. It's a really cool way to get your network extended if you don't want to run ethernet cable all over your house. And I've done hours of content on this, but I still get a lot of questions from folks. And what that tells me is that I haven't adequately explained the concept behind how this works. So in this video, we're gonna do a very high level explanation of how Mocha works, how it can work alongside your existing cable TV wiring. And I'll show you how I have it working in my home currently so you can get your head around this and get yourself a network extender that works. I've been recommending this to friends now for many, many years. Uh, most of the responses I get from my friends after they get it working is that it's a life changer. In fact, I did save at least one marriage here with this technology too, long story. Um, so it's something that once you get it up and running, it will work exceptionally well. And I think for most home users, this is going to be a very good alternative to going through the expense of running new ethernet cable throughout your home. If you got a cable jack in a room, this is likely going to work. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the Mocha Alliance, the standards body for this technology, is a past sponsor here on the channel. They have not sponsored this video. Also, we're going to show you a couple of Mocha boxes in the course of our discussion today. Uh, this one comes from a company called Translite. We also have a few other ones from a company called Go Coax. All of these devices were provided to the channel free of charge. However, they are not sponsoring this video either, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see if we can learn a little bit more about how Mocha works. These boxes will not interfere with your existing cable TV or satellite service. They work alongside of it. So in the case of this Translite box here, what you would do in the room that you want to bring your network to is you would plug the coax cable from your wall into this port and then your existing TV or cable box plugs in here and everything keeps working except now you've got two ethernet jacks that you can use to connect up game consoles or computers or whatever else might connect with an ethernet cable. But you don't need active cable service to use these. Now what if you cut the cord and just have an internet connection with your cable provider? Well, for the most part, Mocha is going to work alongside of those cable modems as well. There are some exceptions to this. There are some changes to the industry going on, but there are tweaks that you can do to keep it all working side by side. But I think for most consumers, you're not gonna have an issue with the Mocha box interfering with your cable modem, at least at the time I'm recording this video. And the reason why it can do this is because the coax cable can support a lot of bandwidth. And the way to look at this is kind of like a radio where each device that you've got hooked up to your cable TV wiring is tuning into a different frequency or a set of frequencies. So where Mocha operates is on a different frequency than the rest of the stuff that's coming in through your cable provider. And that's how all of these things work in conjunction together. They're just operating on different frequencies, even though they're using the same wire. All right, so here is where all of my coax cable is currently situated here in the house. Now, this cable here is the input from the street from Comcast because I still have some limited cable TV services here. I'm doing my internet through fiber optic, but my TV is still part of the deal. And you'll notice I've got this metal cylinder here at the top. This is what's called a Mocha filter. And what this does is it prevents any of my Mocha traffic from leaving the house. And this is an important thing to have in your Mocha setup. And a lot of people were asking me where to put that filter. Well, the best place to put the filter, in my opinion, is right where everything comes in. So there's no limitations within the house for Mocha communications, but they all stop here. So my Mocha doesn't bleed up the wire here and go out to the street. So all of my Mocha traffic is kind of centralized here in the house. Now, I'm not using a cable modem any longer, but when I did, uh, its connection was going out of this port over here. And then the rest of them are going out to other parts of the house. So this is TV service for the lower floors. Uh, this is TV service for the upper floors. 
And so some of these get split a little further down the line, but for the most part, I've got it all centralized here and my Mocha is working everywhere. Now this white cable connected up top here is actually plugged into a Go Coax Mocha box here. And so you can see that it is connected to its coax port. And then on its ethernet output, I have this plugged in essentially into my router that's down here. So now any Mocha box in the house that goes on one of these coax connections will be able to get out to the rest of my network and the internet through this box down here because this essentially is the bridge between my local network and the coax network throughout the home. And so one of the things I recommend you do is what I did here, which is to put one of these Mocha boxes close to your router, but also in a spot where you can get it on your coax network. And that way you've got your bridge to the network and to the internet and any other Mocha box you plug in will get connected just like anything else would in your home. And so that's how everything kind of comes together down here. So let's take a look at this now in action. What you're seeing here is a Go Coax box that I installed on the other side of the house. And it immediately saw the device that was plugged in in the equipment room. And now we've got a bridge over coax between those two points. And if I plug my Mac into it with a two and a half gigabit ethernet adapter, you can see that my speeds out to my multi gigabit fiber optic connection are pretty darn good. I'm getting well beyond two and a half gigabits on the downstream, a little weaker on the upstream. And I think that's due to the fact that I've got a lot of splits in between the utility closet down here and that room on the other side of the house. But nonetheless, I think if somebody was sitting down at that computer, they'd have a hard time telling the difference between an ethernet connection and this coax one. And of course, if I did a little bit more work on the wiring here, I could improve its performance. But still, a gigabit and a half upstream is pretty darn good for not having to run ethernet cable. And instead, we're using coax cable that's been in this house for almost 20 years now. But we do need to spend some time talking about splitters like the one I have here. They are a necessary evil for running a coax network throughout your home, but they are very problematic when it comes to Mocha for a couple of reasons. Now, in my house, when I moved in, I had well over a dozen of these things all over the place because the people that built this house decided that every room needed at least two cable outlets in it. And as a result, I had splits everywhere. And every time you split your cable signal, you're reducing its power. And the splitter will actually tell you how much power you're losing when you do a split. So you can see on this particular splitter, uh, each of these outlets will have 7 dB less than what is coming in. So if you've got a number of splits on the, on the network, essentially, you are dramatically reducing your power every time you introduce another splitter into the mix. So the first thing I did is I got rid of a lot of the unnecessary splits to reduce that power reduction. But you'll also notice on this splitter that its frequency range, if my camera will focus, is limited from 5 to 1,000 megahertz. And Mocha operates at a higher frequency. So this splitter was essentially acting like a filter and blocking the Mocha signals. So anytime one of these splitters encountered Mocha, it was basically taking that Mocha signal off the wire before it passed everything else through. So what you need to get are splitters that are compatible with Mocha. So this one here, as you can see, goes from 5 to 2.3 gigahertz. And this one, of course, works with Mocha, like the one that I have in my equipment room. These are not hard to find. All you got to do is a search for a Mocha splitter, and you'll see a bunch of options come up. And so long as it either says Mocha or supports the 5 to 2.3 gigahertz, you should be in good shape here. And what you'll need to do is replace any splitter that doesn't support those frequencies with one that does and you will likely see better results here. But again, just be mindful of the power reduction that you're doing every time you've got one of these splitters. So if you have an instance where you can take a splitter out of the mix, do it because that will improve signal strength throughout the home. Now, one of the cool things about Mocha is that it is a standard. So if you bought maybe a couple of Go Coax boxes and then a few months later, uh, they're out of stock and you get a translight here, they'll all talk to each other because they support the same underlying standard. Additionally, Mocha is backwards compatible with previous versions of it. So for example, Mocha 1.0 ran at 100 megabits per second. 
those boxes will talk to the new ones here that run at 2.5 gigabits per second, no problem. So you don't have to throw out old stuff if it's working. You can just get the new ones to supplement it. And these work really well for wireless backhaul. So for example, you could get a Wi-Fi extender, plug it into one of the Ethernet jacks here, and have its data go back and forth over Mocha, which will be a much faster backhaul than relying upon mesh wireless, for example. So there's a lot that you can do with these boxes. And what's great is that for the most part, they are plug and play. So to recap here, the best way to get started is to plug one of these Mocha devices into a coax connection near where your router is located, run an ethernet cable from the LAN port on your router over to the Mocha device's ethernet, and once that's done, you've got now a bridge between the internet and your local network and your coax wiring. So the rest of the house now is ready to go. If you plug in another Mocha device on any of your coax outlets, it will find the other ones and be able to communicate and you'll instantly uh, be on the internet. Remember to put that filter on so you can keep your traffic inside of your home. There's also encryption options that I've covered on the reviews of these individual devices that you might want to learn more about if you want to further lock your signal down. But all in, uh, this is a great way, probably the best way, to extend your network without running Ethernet cable everywhere. And it only comes with maybe two milliseconds or so of latency uh, beyond what you're already getting on your network. So there's not much of a hit here in performance and I found it works really, really well for network extension and certainly uh, good enough, I think, for most home use cases. That's gonna do it for this one. Hopefully this clears up some of the questions that people had. Remember, it doesn't really matter where your cable modem is in the mix here because they're all operating on different frequencies. But if I miss something, let me know. I'll come back and do more on this. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.